Evening all. Evening. How are we all doing? Say that, you can't reply to me, can you? You can't reply. But, you get the point. Um, so, as you can see, I am back out in my happy place. <laughs> I always say something and it sounds weird. It sounds like creepy, like my happy, I'm, I'm back in my happy place. Back in my happy place. <laughs> <laughs> you get what I mean. I'm back out in the woods. Um, I'm back in an area which you might recognise. Um, it is near where the bird of prey decided it was going to try and attack my drone. So um, what I'm going to do is in the morning I'm going to get up nice and early and I'm going to head over and just see if I can see if I can get some shots of the of whatever it was. Whoa, hold up there Browners, we can do better than that. So no bird of prey, but we did see this huge herd of red deer and stags out in the field in the morning. So I've got a bunch of video footage um, which I managed to capture, which I'll show to you later in the video. But uh, for now, back to current Kev and uh, the um, camp. This evening, food-wise, I'm going to be doing some um, spicy wraps. Um, with lamb, some marinated lamb, um, some vegetables, um, and some uh, some some uh, red pepper, some hot pepper uh, in there, uh, and some nice sauces and stuff. So I'm going to enjoy that. Um, and it's supposed to rain later, so I've got that to look forward to as well. So I'm going to make the most of it while it's like this. It's still lovely, and I'm going to enjoy it. And I'm going to get the old hammock up. Um, yeah. So let's do this. So for those of you that are interested, um, I don't use Paracord for my ridge line. I use Dyneema. Uh, it's sometimes called um, Zingit. Um, I use a three mil version, I think it is. And then on either end of that, I use Hammock Gear Wasps. Um, they are little titanium clips that go on either end of uh, your ridge line and they just enable you to tighten it up and loosen it off really quickly and it stays tight. Uh, one of the benefits of Dyneema or Zingit as I think the trade name is, uh, is it doesn't stretch. Uh, so Paracord will stretch if it gets wet and overnight whereas Zingit doesn't. So you can pull it nice and tight and it will not slacken off during the night which is, uh, which is really nice. I also find it's much, much quicker to kind of put up and tighten up and knots are easier to kind of pull tight. So I've been using birch bark a lot recently and I thought I'd just mix it up a little bit and do something a little bit more technical. It's not the hardest thing in the world, but for those of you who haven't done it, um, I'm going to use a crample fungus um, and I'm going to use a flint and steel. So I'm just showering a few sparks down onto the crample fungus. And then in front of me, I've got a Bracken Tinder bundle um, ready to take that. So a um, couple of tries and generally, as long as it's nice and dry, you'll get it uh, lit. I then then typically just blow it into a little bit of an ember. Um, but once it's established like that, it would stay smouldering for quite some time. So now that's established, I'll generally just sort of keep hold of that. And that I've got more than enough time to do kind of whatever I need to do. Um, in this occasion, I've got some some bracken. Um, it's some old bracken from last year, so it was a little bit decrepit. And what I tend to do is I'll put a few light little twigs in there, the little pencil lead kind of thickness twigs. I'll, I'll intersperse a few. Intersperse? Oh, um, I'll put a few of those in there. Um, and as you can see, I'm in no rush now. I'm just checking everything that I've got, checking my kind of um, what I've got ready, my stage one, two, and three wood. Um, and I'll just give it a little blow from time to time. I'm just putting a few of those little twigs in there. And uh, and what I find is is that when the bracken then catches, those really light pencil leg twi twigs will, will catch. And it will just establish better in the tinder bundle. So give it a little blow for a little bit. And uh, you can see it's just slowly es establishing by the amount of smoke that's being produced. You normally get to a point, I've very stupidly done this without gloves on as well, so I'm surprised I haven't burnt my hands in the process. But you can see it's lit, but generally it will light and then it will go back out again. I'm just using the wind there that's coming over my shoulder just to help me and just keep it lit. But you can see every time it lights from my breath, it then just goes out. So just give it a few more 
breaths. You can see it's just starting to establish a little bit better now, but even there it's starting to go out. So I'll pop it down, I'll put my pencil leg twigs on there, and then I'm now just putting on what I'd have as my kind of stage one, and I'll just typically if it's not already lit by now and i use quite a tight small bundle i generally recommend a, a bigger tinder bundle put a few more light you know maybe some leaves in there some light twigs and sticks and then you know your your bracken which you've uh, rubbed up get that wood on there so that's starting to heat up and you can see fires just slowly establishing behind me so i'll probably give that a few more blows and then that'll be good to go my uh, other little tip is uh, don't be a one stick wonder I see these people putting like one twig stick on at a time get it on there as long as you've got the kind of brace at the back as you can see I've got my main sticks at the bottom and then I've got one going perpendicular to those as long as you've got that in there I think in a minute I'll probably reach over and grab hold of it and you can lift that that brace as you call it and that'll just let some air get in there it'll help it establish help the, the, the kind of wind go and just throw it on there there you go so I lift it up it's not going to do too much in this situation because the wind's coming over my shoulder but it will let a bit of air get in there and it will help so there you go how bushcraft am I <laughs> that's good enough now there's enough heat in there to do what I need it to there we go get rid of that Right, I'm going to get the hammock up now. I'm going to have it, it's supposed to be wet tonight, potentially it's going to be quite wet uh, and some wind coming in. I think I'm thinking from that direction. So uh, I've put my tarp quite low to the ground, as you can probably tell, um, and I'm going to string my hammock really low as well. So I won't be far off the ground when I'm in it. But the good thing is it gets me down, gets me out of the wind, you know, get protection from the trees and stuff behind. I could have done with having my tarp down a little bit lower. What I might do is instead of having it like at this angle, how it currently is, I might just bring it down a bit flatter. So that will bring it down to the floor closer in the back. Got loads of protection from the front. And I put the fire off to the side. People often put the fire in front of them um, and they put the back of their tarp to the wind. So the idea is they're thinking it's a wind break. It will stop it. You're much better being slightly off at a bit of an angle. So if your ridge line is facing like this, you want the wind coming in kind of from this angle or from that angle. Because otherwise what happens is this is your tarp and what happens is the wind hits it, it rushes over the top and it tumbles on the other side. And what ends up happening is the wind comes back in or the smoke comes back into you. Whereas if this is your tarp line and the, the wind's coming from this angle, you still get a fair amount of protection, especially if you've got doors at the end. I never bother with them, but if you've got doors at the end of your tarp, then what will happen is it will go past you and the, the smoke will go, will continue away from you in one or the other direction. So uh, yeah, I always try and make sure I've got my tarp like at a slight angle to the wind rather than, you know, it acting as a, as a windbreak completely. But yeah, I'm gonna get my tarp up now. Uh, sorry, get my hammock up now. And uh, yeah, I'll show you what I mean. I'm just gonna say actually, sorry for the video quality at the moment. Uh, I managed to spill a can of beer on my camera on a recent trip and it's still away being repaired. So uh, hopefully I'll be back very soon and uh, I'll be back to my main camera rather than action cameras. So uh, sorry about that. So recently uh, in a video I mentioned that I'd do a bit of a sort of deep dive on different pieces of kit um, as, as I kind of use them little mini reviews if you like I you know I think I've said in most of my videos if I like it or don't like it and obviously I continue to use it so I think that's a good uh, a good sign well, here comes the rain great um, but uh, I did the um, cumulus Selva 450 under blanket recently um, so what I'll do is I'll just quickly take you through the um, the war bonnet blackbird um, it's my hammock of choice 
Um, I've got experience with um, the DD Frontline, uh, trying to think what else I've had, the ENO, uh, Double Nest, I think it's called. Um, what else have I used? Uh, a UK hammock. So I did use a UK hammock, so I only got to use it for a day or try it out, but I've got a little bit of experience with that. Um, and that's it. So, you know, take this on its face value for what it is, but uh, I had a DD hammock. Um, I, you know, I know a lot of people get on with them. Personally, I didn't. Uh, I didn't find it overly comfortable. And I was, I was on the verge of kind of giving up with hammock camping, if I'm honest. And um, somebody had said about asymmetric hammocks and how an asymmetric hammock lies so differently. You know, you get supposedly you've got a much flatter lie. Um, I'd looked at Shug, um, who is a YouTuber from America who talks about hammocks. He's a very experienced, you know, YouTuber in this kind of hammocking world, if you like. Um, and yeah, I, I guess I heard enough from him to make me believe that the problems that I was experienced with um, uh, the DD hammock um, could be overcome by getting um, either a bigger hammock a longer when I say bigger I mean longer or with an asymmetric now um, what I'll say is hammocks tend to fall into two categories um, or three categories actually um, spread a bar um, which are um, kind of flat hammocks that you tend to use on a, on a beach you know if you go to you know the Caribbean um, then you'll tend to have that type it's flat at either end it's got sort of metal uh, metal or wood stays that open it up that's the first type don't tend to use those um, in this kind of scenario because they're very unstable um, the next type, um, and probably the most common type, is what's known as a gathered hammock. It's basically a, a rectangle of material um, of varying length, and they gather up the ends, hence the name gathered hammock, um, and that is where your suspension system is hung. Um, the third style, um, and um, the Warbonnet Blackbird uh, is one of those, uh, is what's known as an asymmetric. Um, so it is normally... Uh, handed in the sense that you have um, head at one end, feet at the other. You can't sleep the other way around in it, it just doesn't work. Um, there are situations, I think dream hammocks make an asymmetric which is not handed, um, so you can sleep either way. Um, I'm not sure exactly how that works, I don't have experience with it, but I believe that's the case. Anyway, the point is, mine is um, foot end at this end, head end at this end and the, the war bonnet blackbird is specifically made that way because the um, the head net is different at this end um, uh, one of the other benefits of, uh, of this is that on the other side it has something called I think they call it the gear shelf or something like that, gear loft something like that um, um, which gives you some storage on the other side parts of a, the, the, the hammock um, are you know the main body obviously the fly net personal preference if you want that um, personally if you're gonna get one look for one that either has a ridge line down the middle I'll show you what the ridge line is in a moment um, either have one with a ridge line or get one that holds it up away from your face in some way um, the war bonnet and again it was one of the reasons why I went for it has both of these things um, it both has a ridge line um, which is known as a structural ridge line um, the uh, the idea of a structural ridge line is that um, it is a fixed point, it's a fixed length between the toe and the head end. And what that means is, no matter how hard you pull on the sides, on the, the suspension system, the hammock hanging underneath it will not change. That is the idea. You can get it too tight and it won't be quite right, but it will help you get a much better lay every single time. So what I'll do is now I'll take you up there, I'll show you the, uh, you know, the hammock uh, and its different features, what I like about it. And then, you know, if you've got any questions, as with, with all of these, the whole point in this is supposed to be that, you know, there was, there was a time when I was kind of looking around and didn't really know what I was looking for, or didn't know the difference between things. People were saying things like structural ridge line and, you know, asymmetric, and I had no idea what that meant. So, you know, if you've got any questions, throw them down in the comments. I'll be quite happy to, to uh, answer those for you. Right, I'll take you in a bit closer and I'll show you around. So this is the War Bonnet Blackbird, uh, obviously, f um, this is the, uh, the bug net on the top and the main material on the bottom. Sometimes you'll hear them referred to as 
double layer. Um, what that means is the bottom layer here uh, has two layers of material. Um, the benefit of that is if you don't want to use an under blanket, you can either get some like Reflectix or you know some uh, some kind of thermal material, uh, even a foam mat, anything like that, and you can slide it in between the two layers, and it means that uh, it will give you some insulation from from below. So double layer, that tends to be what it is. The dream, this this war bonnet blackbird is a double layer, so I could do that. Personally, I don't like it. I've always found that the the mat slips out, or it just doesn't it just doesn't work for me. One of the benefits of the the war bonnet is I was saying that it has a structural ridge line. I'll show you that in a minute. But it's got double double zips here, uh, as you can see, and then on the top it's got this fly net. Uh, it has it's quite hard to tell. I'll take you around so hopefully you can kind of see. It's got this kind of part. See, so you've got a section of bug net here. And then you've got these tie out points which go out and I just attach them to a little peg down here. What they do is they lift the um, bug net up away from your face. So when you're actually in there, you can see it's quite a, quite a height from the ridge line. This is the ridge line, by the way, up here. You're way down inside the hammock and it lifts it up away from your face. So you're almost in like a little tent in there um, when you're using it. So let me open this up so you can see. So that's it kind of opened up and inside. If I kind of take you inside now, you can see if I bring you around here. So the ridge line is way up here on the top. You'd be lying in it and what actually happens is you lie in it kind of like this diagonally and it opens it right out now this would be your head end up at this end and then down here you have this kind of slack of material you can see that that slack of material means that your feet sit in there and they sit way out there way out at an angle and you come across diagonally so the idea is that you're diagonal to the ridge line and what that does is it gets you an even flatter lay um, and it's much 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 more comfortable now in a, the, you can unzip this bug net completely and roll it right back and then you get a tie here so you can tie it back out of the way and you can have it open if you want to over here I don't know if you can see that up there this is what they call the gear shelf so when you're in here you put the stuff in here and it weighs it down like this and then you can store things in there so some like at night sometimes i'll put my trousers in there sometimes i'll just put a hat or gloves or you know just bits of bobs my phone often goes up there so it's out of the way this is what you'd call your structural ridge line up here so this is a fixed length and it goes all the way from the toe end all the way up to the head end and the idea is uh it shouldn't be sort of any tighter than, than that, if I do this and just kind of put a kink in it, I can do that without any any problems at all. If if you pull the structural, uh, sorry, the, uh, uh, the the suspension system tighter, well, you can't do that. You'll find it'll affect how the, the hammock lays. So I just put some clips and things up on here, and these just allow me to hang things. I'll put my head torch over the top of this at night um, so I've got a little, I don't need a secondary lamp or anything. And then I've bought, this is an addition, didn't come with standard with the net. It's basically a little uh, hammock, if you like, a mini hammock for your hammock. It's got a couple of little Prusik knots that go on at each end. And this just allows me to put store, store some bits in there. So I just usually keep, there is some uh, earplugs and things like that in there. So I'll zip that back up. Like that. And one around the other side. The other good thing about this structural part on it is that um, I find it just keeps everything tight. So it's really easy. That's one hand to do the zips. And uh, it's never, never a problem, you see, which is nice. I'll go around the back and just show you. So it, it comes in uh, a double-ended stuff sack. So uh, one end is red, it's got a little marker on it to show red and black. So then you can differentiate between uh, the ends when it's stuffed away and then you just tighten those up once you've stuffed everything in. Uh, it comes with these tree straps up here and uh, some 
different. It's not these original ones. I changed these carabiners uh, to some other ones I had. And then mine is on, oh, that's very frustrating. This is a type of suspension system. I'll put it down in the bottom, but it allows you endless adjustment points. Instead of the ones that have loops on it, you can just pull these tight and it will allow it to adjust to almost every, any possible position. Um, yeah, I'll just take you around the other side again quickly so you can see it. Uh, show you down this bit so you can get an idea. So there's that bit stuck out. That would be the, the gear shelf that I mentioned. Yeah, I think that's it. I can't think of anything else specifically that, you know, you might want to know. It, 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 it changed hammock camping for me. Um, like I say, I tried the DD um, and I didn't get on with it. And I, I basically put it down to the, the, the fact that it was a gathered hammock. Uh, when I changed to this, uh, yeah, I instantly slept in it, like or like pretty much like I'm at home, which was amazing. I've since found out that it length of the hammock that often changes that. So um, there's a couple of companies in the UK which I would definitely, definitely recommend because I've heard a lot about them, and they are knapsack hammocks. And the UK vendor. They make gathered hammocks, but they make them much longer, um, which is supposed to make a huge, 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 huge difference. So um, I would recommend them. I would also recommend the war bonnet. Uh, it's uh, it is fantastic. But if anybody's got any questions, they want to know anything, give us a shout. Um, you know, ask away. I'll be happy to uh, answer any questions that you've got. Cool. I hope that's been helped. Right. I'm going to get some food on. Let's get on with this. leave those to rest for a minute whilst I prep the last few bits spread this out I've got some nice garlic and herb dip and then I'm just going to finish that off a little bit of rocket in there on each of them as well.
yeah that's it I'm all packed away that one's over for now I've just come over to uh, the edge of the woodland here I'm gonna sit and have my coffee to see if I can spot that that bird of prey I've heard it you can hear it every so often so uh, yeah so at this point I realized what I was seeing I uh, I had to kind of double take but I looked out across the field and I could see this the backs I could just see the backs of this herd of red deer out across the field so I kind of scuffled around and got my gear together and got my got my drone out and sent it out across and well you know I hope you enjoy the rest of the footage of this herd of deer out across the field and I'll, I'll come back in a bit.